you can bear. I wish I had some folk that really understood you really don't know how much you can bear. How many times have you said I just can't take no more and more come but you still stand it. Why? Because you don't know how much you can bear but God knows how much you can bear. He even said when it gets too great I'll make a way of escape for you. Come on, put those hands together. If you, if you know what the word of God has promised, 
that he will not let you be tempted above that which you are able, so he does know how much we can bear. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Jesus knows how much you can bear. Sometimes you look at what folk are bearing in their lives. And you be saying in yourself, Lord, have mercy. I don't know how they're able to do it. My God, because God put different graces on different people. And what you might can stand, somebody else might can't stand. And so they're not given that grace to be able to endure to the end. Uh, the wisdom of God is past our understanding. And God needs somebody that can be, amen, a witness, even in the midst of storm. I'm so glad he will not be left without a witness. And that's why sometimes even as saints of God, we go through some experiences just so we can show the world that we're not serving God only because we're on the mountain. But when we visit the valley, he is still the lily in the valley. He is still the bright and morning star. Amen. Those that call on him, he's still a present help. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's, he's just that wonderful. You can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. Come on, tell your neighbor, you can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. He's been mighty good to me. As I count down the years, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He's been faithful. I was talking to Brother Quick today. And I, he's in his 70s, and I said, you can tell some stories, can't you, about what God has done in the course of your life. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody right now. Has God done anything in the course of your life? This is why I'm still here, because he's been good to me. Anybody got that kind of testimony that God has been that good to me? I can't tell him enough how grateful I am when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul still cries out, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, I just want to take time out now to give God the glory, to give God his praise, to give him his honor. God, you've been mighty good. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. I'm so glad. Do I got any glad folk in here? Enter into his gates with praise and thanksgiving. God, I'm so grateful. God, I'm so grateful. God, I'm so grateful. Because when I look around and see how many times the devil could have took me out, but God was there. God was a present help. Woo! He's that kind of God. Come on, high five a few folk around you and say, he's that kind of God. That God will show up and will show out that God that'll show up and cause breakthroughs. The kind of God that'll show up and heal your sick body. That kind of God that'll show up and put gladness in your sadness. Oh, yes, he will. You ought to holler at somebody and say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Woo. Woo. Can I just take time out to thank my God? Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord. Woo. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. I don't know what you come to do. 
I know I just can't sit down on it. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. I can't sit down on him because he's been that kind of good. I can't sit down on him because when I needed a miracle, he showed up. I can't sit down on him. Come on, tell your neighbor, I can't sit down on him. Because when I look back over my life, see what he's been doing. See how he brought me over. See how he spoke life. See what he did. Come on, you ought to tell somebody, I do remember how good God's been. I do remember Woo! how he opened doors, how he called advancement, how he healed my body. Oh, I got a story to tell. Let me calm down. I feel like old shouting y'all. Uh, every now and then you got to hold a mule and just let me dance for a little while. I can't dance like you, but I can put them up and put them down. I might can't shout like you, but I can throw my hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. I might can't dance like you, but I can show them that I love them. Anybody love them right now, go on and show them some sound. Woo! That's all right, Mother Big. That's all right, sis. Woo! That's it. That's it right there. Oh, I wish I could shout like you. Woo! Some of y'all ain't got no shout no more. Come on. Woo! Ah! I got a feeling. The thing's gonna be all right. Woo! Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything will be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright, be alright. The Holy Ghost told me everything's gonna be alright. Oh, the Holy Ghost told me everything's gonna be alright. Oh, the Holy Ghost told me everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Sound good. Alright. 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 Jesus said it, Jesus said it, all right, be all right, be all right, be all right, be all right. Just look at a few folks and say, I just got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Sometimes you got to prophesy to your own self. You got to speak life to your own self. Everything going to be all right. Come on, say it like you got power. Everything. Somebody holler out everything. Come on, say it again. I believe somebody, somebody getting a breakthrough right there. Everything. Woo. That's my testimony. And I will not change it. Everything is going to be all right. That sorrow is going to be gone tomorrow. Come on, somebody. That pain got to get in his own lane. Woo! 
I wish I could talk to somebody. Oh, Lord. Feel all right. See, 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 if you ever want problems and situations to change, all you got to do is just change your confession. See, a lot of times you talk about what you're going through more so than believing what God said he's going to do. But if you ever get to the point where you stop talking problems, because most of the time the problem is just you. It ain't Tom, Dick, and Harry. It ain't Mary Jane and Lucy. You just got to change you. Come on. Come on. Now you want to look at me like a deer in a headlight. I'm talking about you. The problem ain't them. The problem ain't him or her. The problem is you. You got to adjust. You got to learn how to be agile, mobile, and versatile. Come on, somebody. Ah, uh, come on. You done messed up your, your date night because you got upset. If you, if you look at the church app, you'll see it's on the marriage counseling part. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all skip that. I put it out there every nine, every, every week something's changing. Just because you don't see the graphics changing don't mean that there's not a new message in there. Every week, check it out. Check out the marriage corner. Maybe it'll help some of us. Because marriages go through different transitions. Because God is trying to get us matured. Uh, some, of, some married folk act like children. If you can't have my way, I want no parts of it. Stop acting like a child. If you said I do, don't be talking about I did it. <laughs> you said I do. God wasn't playing with that. He meant what he said. And you ain't going to always have goosebumps running up and down your back. Oh, how did I get on that? Read the app. Yeah, but our society today needs to see successful marriages. The saint, let, let me tell you something. The saints are quitting more than the world. Yeah, the, the, the saints are, are, are throwing in the towels on marriages left and right. And then you want to talk about the power of God. You ain't got no Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost, as we said in Bible study, the Holy Ghost comes with power. Where's your power? Sometimes you got to act like you're single but don't move. Why? Because quitters never win. You always quitting. You're on your 19th marriage. How many marriages going to take to find out it's you the problem? How many? You looking for that perfect somebody, that ain't going to happen. Because you're going to mess them up. But you're looking for a perfect. There's nobody down here perfect. So what are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? You trying to find somebody that's going to act just like you? That's going to really be a problem. Because you ain't as perfect as you think, especially if you meet you again. I wish I could. I don't know who's. I, 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 this ain't a part of my message. But family is the foundation. Children don't want to listen to parents. Come on now. Well, she just won't do right. What about you? Huh? What about you? What could you do better than you're doing right now? Because 99.9% .9 of your response to your spouse is based on how you're feeling, not what you know. Oh, the, sky, the rockets might not be flying in the sky no more. But guess what? It don't mean it can't happen. If you get an attitudinal adjustment. That's all you need is an attitudinal adjustment. 
You change your attitudes, you change your whole environment. You change the whole atmosphere. Instead of walking around looking like a piece of lemon. Oh, maybe I'm talking like this because Valentine's, I ain't, I ain't even know nothing about Valentine's. After you done been through 45 different Valentine's, you know, it's kind of. My wife and I, we got, we got a, a great marriage. Not a perfect marriage, but a great marriage. Did, I, did y'all hear the difference? We got a great marriage. Sometimes she get on my nerves. Sometimes I get on her nerves. But guess what? Them doors ain't open and let none of us escape. She knows what I'm upset when I say them, them locks are designed to keep folk out, not in. But neither one of us unlocked the door. Why? Because love ain't based on just your momentary argument and disagreement. Why don't you grow up? I told one of the young daughters of mine, I said, the danger of having premarital sex is when you get married, then if that husband ain't performing like those 19 men you met before he, you got to him, you're going to have a problem in your relationship. I know y'all don't, y'all didn't come out for you for this. Huh? You, you got to understand, different strokes for different folk. But sex was designed to be the glue to keep marriages together. You mess around and go for your honeymoon, y'all, gotta, y'all, y'all thinking about playing cards. Because you done took the thrill away. But what are we going to do? Let's just go to the movies. It's not what, that's not what the honeymoon night was supposed to be all about. Then you're talking about, oh, I'm going to get married because I don't want to be lonely. Please don't get married because you don't want to be lonely. You mess around and get married, you be the loneliest. One is the loneliest number that you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it to try to stop having fornication. Because when that flesh die down, you're going to be looking at me like, what in the world have I done? Y'all think I'm joking. I ain't joking. You might be laughing at what I'm saying, but I'm as serious as a heart attack. And how many know when a heart attack hits you, you serious? Being married 44 years. its a lot of scars in that. A lot of setbacks, a lot of tears. What you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking for? You ain't going to escape it because you're going to get another knucklehead. Because you're looking for perfection because you think you, you done cornered the market. You ain't cornered nothing. Can I tell you how, how much God love you? Y'all ready for me to tell you how much God love you? He love you so much that he put your nose on top of your mouth so you can't smell your own breath. And you can talk right into somebody else's face and they're blinking the whole time you're talking. That's how much he loves you. He protects you from yourself. So you see the faults of others before you can see the fault of your own. That's why he said you're so busy trying to take the beam out of uh, uh, the, 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 the what? You got a beam in your own eye. You're trying to take the pebble out of their eye. You got a big beam in your eye. Come on. Because we, pro- we protect ourselves. One thing you need to le- learn how to do in marriage is learn how to say you sorry. Instead of waiting for somebody to always say sorry to you. With your bad self. I'm so glad I ain't talking about none of y'all. I'm glad I'm on Facebook. I'm talking out there to them. You want to make your marriage work? Change your attitude. Be partners if you can't do anything else. Be friends if you can't do anything else. And let time heal those wounds. You ready to run. What you going to do? Find somebody else? Get lost in your kids? and Stop playing with yourself. Because them kids are going to grow up and leave you. They're going to leave you and they're going to go get their own 
And you be somebody, well, I just, I sacrificed my life for you. Who told you to do that? Mine knew at 18, everybody started looking at that door. And I told him I ain't taking care of no grandkids either. You get hooked on drugs, you're going to put your baby in the system, and I'm going to come visit them because those folks get paid. Now, that, look, that sounds kind of hard, don't it? Well, let me tell you something. You only got one life. Come on. You ought to look at somebody and say, you only got one life now. You can waste it on trying to serve everybody else and forget yourself. Then when you go down, there's a whole lot of bitter folks in these nursing homes. Jesus. All right. Premarital sex will mess your life up. See, the, the marriage bed was supposed to be undefiled. Both of you learn and explore together. Learning where to go and where not to go. Come on, somebody. You got to understand that. Because when you start having all these different experiences, when you get yours and you finally say, I do, you're going to have major problems. Because you bring those experiences into your bedroom. You bring those spirits into your life. Come on now. Especially that first, that first experience. Jesus. And married folk, stop quitting because your children learn how to quit. Stop quitting. If you quit before, don't quit again. Why? Because every time you quit, it's going to get easier and easier. What? He passed gas? I'm going to get a divorce. I can't stand it. No, I, I just got to go. <laughs> he snores too loud. I, I, I need another, no, I, no, I need another house. It is not funny. Folk are doing that. Well, she won't cook for me. Well, go to McDonald's. Cook yourself. I had, this, I had this illusion about marriage when I first got married. I ain't going to tell you all my details, but, but uh, I had some things in my mind. She, she wiped all those things away. <laughs> she said, you ain't marry your mother. I ain't picking up after you. I ain't hiding your clothes. Oh, Jesus. Now I got to pull out some money. Would you mind him in my pants? <laughs> See, y'all let little stuff like that make, mess y'all up. That is an individual. I am an individual. And sometimes we don't see eye to eye. But that don't make me give up everything because we got one little issue or two little issues. Well, his feet stink. Well, then go down there and wash them. Put your mask on like they do in the hospital and get down there and put some Clorox and everything else in there to kill that smell. Come on, somebody. You all up in this face and she, she's talking to you and you blinking. Give her a mint. Y'all looking at me. Marriages are falling apart because they're not meeting every expectation. Amen. Did you think that was going to happen? Huh? Did you think that they were going to always, my wife weighed 99 pounds when I met her. Now she's 99 and a half, she said. <laughs> If I married her because she was 99 pounds, we would have divorced when she passed 130. Because now she ain't got that Coca-Cola shape. I'm going to let you in on one little secret. (laughs) 
she said, she had a beautiful blue dress. <laughs> but I'm just saying, when somebody asks you, why do you love your spouse? Why did you marry your spouse? You can't say, well, I, I, mar I married her because she, she had a Coca-Cola shake. The sooner that Coca-Cola turns into a keg, you're going to start looking for a divorce. And then you're going to start looking at these other young girls that got Coca-Cola shakes. I love you just because. Just because. Because if I try to specify one reason, the enemy is going to make that one reason change. I used to weigh 120. Now I weigh 121 and a half. Why y'all laughing? Y'all scales broke, not mine. So there was a reason why you went to that altar. Fight to make it work. Because you're setting a precedent for those other ones, your kids, your grandkids. They've got to see somebody can take a licking and keep on ticking. Yeah. All my kids never knew what all we went through until they got married. And they started complaining. And then we was able to share with them some of our experiences. And I know some of them, it blew their mind. Amen. Why? Because we don't spill over to our children. We don't let our children see our difficulties. We get into an argument, we, leave, we left the house. And fight like cats and dogs and come back acting like we just came off a honeymoon. They know I talk loud, so they would always think I'm preaching. Make your marriage work. Yeah, they ain't perfect. You ain't either. They ain't got it all together. You ain't either. See, what, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about the trick of the enemy. He'll think you fell out of love. And the reason he'll make you think that that is because you're basing everything on how you feel rather than what you know. If you got a good man, You keep him. You got a good woman, and I do. You keep them. Cause let me tell you something. You don't know what you're getting out here. And then you, then you got, then you got this, then you got this new independent women I am loose attitude. I don't need no man. All right, well, get rid of them batteries. You'll figure that one out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Stop complaining about what God has allowed. Let me say that again. Stop complaining about what God has allowed. You selected them. Now God's going to help you. People want to come and talk to me in my office. But why I'm, I'm going to spend three hours talking to you and you already got your mind made up. I ain't got time to waste with you. Because you can hear what I'm saying right now. You can listen to them tapes I gave you. And you can, I mean, they got, God got all kinds of material to help you. You just got that want it. Amen. How many of y'all look at the marriage corner on the app? I didn't ask you, did you see it? I asked you, did you read it? Huh? Some of it. Okay. Some of it. And you single folk need to read a whole lot of it. So that when you meet Billy Bob and Jan, you're going with your eyes open. And he got some crusty feet. I'm going to put some lotion on it. You th see, see, when you come out, let me tell you something. When you come out, you're coming out looking your best. And you don't see none of the 
the flaws. Then you get married and you see things you ain't see. Because you're always demonstrating your best. Now the problem is, why is it that when we get married, we don't think we still got to do our best? I remember when me and my wife were going through storms. And I was down there sitting in front of the refrigerator crying. I said, Lord, I don't know how to win this woman back. Lord, what did I need to do? He said, go back and do what you used to do when you first met her. Y'all done blocked me off? See when folks say, well, pastor, I can't hear a word. You hearing a word because you got a tomorrow. And I'm speaking a present word for your tomorrow. And to you marry for, I'm preaching a, a, a revelatory word right now for you to use tonight. Use it tonight. Get, get rid of your excuses. Well, I don't like the way that he do this, and I don't like the way she do that. See, that's the devil. You're casting out devils out of everybody else. Cast the devil out of that relationship. Oh, y'all, some of y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all don't, don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear it. I can't get you to come on Wednesday night, so I'll get you when I got you. Huh? And I'm getting some folk, you can look at their face and tell them, You looking all around. I'm, look, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Marriages go through stages. I'm so sorry I messed up so much in the beginning of my relationship. Terrible. She threw me to the dogs. Threw me to the dogs. I came back. Because I got saved. I got saved and saw the error of my ways. Prior to, I didn't care. They're going to talk to me. Prior to me getting saved, I was terrible. Y'all can't see none of that today. I was terrible. And when I got saved, huh? I was set up by Satan. To not even worry about trying to make my marriage work. But when that word got a hold of my heart. See, the word got to, see, the word got to get a hold to your heart. See, when the word gets a hold to your heart, you can do the impossible. You can receive the miraculous. But as long as you are in control and let your heart get hard. Where's that power? Woman, thou art. No, you ain't. <laughs> just as bound right now as I'm talking. The well, pastor just don't know what I'm dealing with. How you know I don't know what you're dealing with? I dealt with more hard stuff than you think I did. Huh? But you got to let God get a hold of your heart. I said let God get a hold of your heart. Can he do it? You don't, wanna, you don't get with me now. Go home. Angel's trying to dance with me. Go home. Put on some soft music if you want to. Not hallelujah, let's dance. No, no, no. We ain't hallelujah right now. We're creating a mood, turning the lights down low. Uh-oh, Keith's smiling now. <laughs> Keith was looking down for a while. <laughs> Keith said, Pastor, preach now. Preach, preach, Pastor. You, I seen all his teeth. <laughs> you know, when he smiled, he, he got, he got, he got. <laughs> Time to get ready. Oh, oh, but anyway. Marriage is a sacred thing. Please.
please, how many of y'all know this was not my message today? I was going to talk about defining moments, and I guess this is one. Yes, this is one. This is one. Listen, listen, listen. We're not perfect. We don't have it all together. But guess what? We can help each other become what God called us to be. If we can get ourselves out the way. Sometimes my wife will respond to me or say something. It's not what she says, but it's how she said it. And if you don't have a grip on your attitude of your own self, you'll jump right in that water. And the next thing you know, it done got heated. And now y'all done drew a line in the bed. The married folk are looking, they, they cracking up because they know I'm talking right down the lane. Right. But we, we, we got to stop divorcing. We, we got to stop that. We got to stop separating. Because all we're telling our young people is just go on and live together, lay up, have sex, and when you get tired of it, go to the next one. That's what you're teaching them. You're teaching them not that marriage is sacred. Sleep in another room. Why? Huh? They didn't get here by you sleeping in another room. Amen. Unless you're a tremendous, well, let me hear. <laughs> you, might, you, might, you might be upset for a while, but don't make it a, a, a lasting thing. Because Satan will get in that thing. Oh, See, because, let me tell you something. Satan doesn't want you to be close to your spouse. Amen. And sister girl comes sashaying by. And meet him at the water fountain. How you doing? She puts some extra spray on. She already know you ain't happy. So she come by and they just have casual talk. Oh, yeah, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. You know, it's just a few things. What is it? Well, you know, my wife and I. Oh, really? Wow, you're such a good man. <laughs> Can I tell you something about a man? Y'all ready? Women? You ready? A man loves to be praised because he was created by God. And God loves to be praised. So we are in the image of God, and a man loves to be praised. That man will lift up a building when you praise him. Amen. That man will get... Listen, Sinbad said his mother knew how to get all her work done. She would say, honey, do you want some lemonade? He said, yeah. <laughs> Why? Instead of being so, so hard and tough, don't you know you can get anything you want out of a man if you give him the love that he needs? You notice I said he needs? Because see, what you felt to understand, you were created to be soft to him. And he'll give you everything you want. <laughs> Dawn over there looking like a bobby cat. <laughs> you need this. You need this. And young girl, stop giving your body to a man that ain't married to you. Why should he have husband privileges and he's still on the prowl? He's still on the prowl. He's too young to be serious with you. Soon as his... Oh, God. I'm, 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 I'm constantly putting the brakes on here. Because we on Facebook and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. But, 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 but you, you too young... Let me go back. He's too young to be serious like you. Amen. He's not built that way. Amen. You just one experience after some other experiences he's going to have. Right. Oh, I'm so in love. No, you just in lust. Yeah. Had one young girl tell me, but pastor, I, 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 I just can't do it. I said, you shouldn't have never opened it. Because it's like a cocaine. It's like a get high. Because sex was designed to glue the relationship together. 
once you break that hymen and create that blood covenant, the spirit of oneness was supposed to be created. Uh-oh. I'm so sorry. Like I said, so sorry I messed up in the beginning. Because there was a whole lot of stones in that heart. And I felt like I was on the chain gang. Trying to break them rocks that I created. You got to realize that a woman is soft. She's emotional. She's tender. Come on, somebody. And when they get wounded, they carry it a long time. We men say, okay, I'm sorry. Come on, let's just move on. No, it don't work like that. And some of you who have gotten divorced and got remarried, they're bringing that old relationship in with them. Don't ever think that they healed. You do one thing that stirs up a thought. They see that man they were previously with. I think I done got my point across. Stop divorcing. Stop separating. Stop splitting. You in different rooms, make that other room your office and get back in your bedroom. Because what you're doing is teaching your children that marriage don't work. You're teaching your children enough is enough and just go on your way. We did this in front of God. Some of y'all ain't looking at me no more now. That's all right. That's all right. I'm still going to tell it. You know why I'm going to tell it? Because I'm going home with mine. I ain't going home with you. Come on, I ain't going home with you. Is it easy? No, it's not. But what makes it work is you know where you want to go. And you know the will of God. Come on, somebody. How old were y'all when y'all got married? You in your 60s? I was looking over here. <laughs> you was in your late 60s? How old? You were what? 64. What were you, Elder? 68? And still got some fire in the oven. Let me look down now, mother. Let me look it down. So it's not too late. Huh? It's not too late. Amen. And when you get on these kind of medications, look, come on now, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching already. I, you, you know, I'm preaching already. You get on these kind of medications, don't whoop him because he's not, you know, whatever. Huh? Medication. Nobody. You women, you, you go through the, 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 the um, uh, menopause, and, and I tell all men, menopause means man on pause. Don't do nothing. <laughs> just, just stay still. With, let it be that way. Because if you be trying to correct them, you're going to get in trouble. Because they're on a roller coaster. You just sit back and say, honey, when you land, just let me know. Because when them cycles hit, you got to deal with them what? According to what? Knowledge. Sometimes I can look at my wife, it ain't a good day to mess with her too much. I just leave her right on, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let me go to my room. All right. I don't want to do nothing. You got to, men, you got to deal with them according to knowledge. And, and every now and then, you got to pull in for an oil change. What do you mean oil change? Sit down, cut the TV up. Baby, am I, am I okay? Is there anything I'm doing wrong? Do you need me to kind of straighten up anywhere? What, it, it, are you all right? Not just take it for granted and you come home and find the house empty when you get all work. <laughs> I thought we was okay. You never stopped in for oil change. Now, let me deal with that. Women are always talking about, he just won't talk. 
No, he's talking, but you, you have a certain conversation. And we don't, we're not as elaborate as you. Now, if there's something that needs to be said, don't, don't, don't excuse yourself out of whatever situation is. Like you might say, well, you know, I, I didn't like this about what you, you said. Well, I didn't like about what you said. You, you, you. You got to stop saying you, you, you and say we, 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 we. It's a we thing. It's not a you thing. Because the moment you say you, a defense comes up. Y'all going to talk to me after. Huh? Because then you become defensive. And then you'll say, well, you do it. You, how many of y'all done said it? You do it. You did it. Now, two wrongs. But you say it's okay when you say, well, you do it. So that gave you license to do it too. No. No. If I'm weak in that area, you bear, it, bear my infirmity. You don't make it your reason to walk away from me. You don't make it your reason to get angry with me. Help me. We're helpers one of another. My success is her success. Her success is my success. My failures is her failures and her failures is mine. I don't care what you try to say. We're we going to either be successful together or we're going to fail together. I don't care if you stand back and watch me fail. Guess what? we both going to fail. Because regardless of whether you want to believe it or not, it is a partnership. Yeah, you got your money, fine. Be happy with it. But when the push comes to shove and we got to survive, we got to do something better than your money, my money. Three things happen in the marriage. Got seven more minutes left. I'll preach my message next week. The problem is sex, power, and money. Those are the three bullets that the devil uses all the time. He doesn't change his strategy at all. And men, if your wife make more money than you, shut your manhood down. Amen. Baby, get another raise. Amen. And just because you make more money don't make you the head of the house. Yeah. Oh, well, we equal. Yeah, we equal in power but not position. Amen. Come on now. We're equal in power, but not position. The man is still the head of the house. Oh, well, I, look at what all I do. Look, well, let me give you the same analogy that y'all probably heard already. When a, a, a Mack truck, uh, 18-wheeler is coming down the side of the highway and a little beetle bug is on the main highway, guess who got the yield? Guess who got a yield? That 18-wheeler got a yield because he's coming into traffic. That man might be a little beagle, but going down the highway, but guess what? He is in charge because he's on the main drag. Amen. You carry a heavy load, that's all right. You still got the yield. Amen. Well, some of y'all ain't looking at me now. Amen. Well, I know more than him. I do, but that's fine. You still got the yield. Okay, I'm going to ask you later on, Don. She thought, I heard that that's right so loud. <laughs> if we love one another, as the Bible says, we will do so much better in our relationships. You can't base love on how you feel. Because sometimes you feel good, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel argumentative. Sometimes my wife will respond a certain way. I say, well, why are you saying it like that? That's just the way I talk. What the, I'm, I'm giving you a signal now. I'm saying, I don't want you talking to me like that. Amen. I'm giving you a signal. To avoid an argument, you don't make an issue. You heard what I said. Now, now, now feed off of that. And sometimes you got to master your spirit because you, you used to say, especially if you had a dominant mother. Some of you had some dominant mothers. Mother ran the house. Then you get married, you think you're going to run the You can't do that. Amen. That's why readers are leaders. I can ask right now, how many of y'all read about married books on how to be a better wife or a better husband? No, nope, not too many hands going to go up. But you're reading about casting out devils. You're waiting for the next appointment. 
Come on now. I'm talking real to you. I spend time reading different mar marital books. That's why I give y'all information. I, I read a lot. Huh? Do, do I have it all together? No. No, child. I, I still don't have it together. But guess what I'm doing? I'm putting information in so that the Holy Ghost can check me. See, some of y'all can't get checked by the Holy Ghost because you ain't putting nothing in there. The Holy Ghost can only bring back to remember. Am I in the book? Am I in the book? See, the Holy Ghost can only bring back to remembrance the things you put in. See, if you put your old way of thinking still in there, guess what? When things hit the fan, you're going to go back to thinking your, your, your way. Not God's way, but your way. Well, maybe this message was meant because Valentine's is coming. Come on, give God a good hand clap. Do I love my wife? With all my heart, all my soul, and all that within me is. She's the next thing after God. Is she's the perfect spouse? Not by a long shot. Am I the perfect spouse? Not by a long shot. We just look real good. But we go home and we work it out. Amen. Perfection is on the other side, my dear. Well, I, I, I know I can do better than this. Then the next time we see you in the mall, you walking around naked because he done tore your hind parts to pieces. I know you don't think stuff like that can happen. I've, I've, I've had people come and tell me horror stories when they said, I should have stayed where I was. And I always, one pastor asked me, said, do the, do the women in your church flirt with me? I said, no, because they know I'm crazy. <laughs> you flirt with me if you want, I'll talk about you like a dog. And they all know, and, and, and I tell them, they all know it. They, 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 they don't even give you a hint. I said, if they did, I can't catch it. <laughs> I wish you would. All this hell I done went through to try to keep my relationship right, and now you're going to put some perfume on and smile at me? Please. Because <laughs> I know what I got. And that's an arm and handful. Come on now. But I wouldn't trade in because she'd been tried. Me and Brother Ernie was talking one day, and we both, you know, he, he said, Pastor, I'm using your words. That woman been tried. I'd be crazy to go out here and fool with some Jezebel out there in the street. Don't know how to cook. At this stage of my life, you better know how to cook. <laughs> we ain't going to McDonald's. <laughs> If anything was to happen to her, I don't see myself doing it again. But guess what? She can't be coming up there talking. <laughs> what? I ain't got time to nurse you back to salvation. No, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Tell me, we going to declare? Oh, no, I ain't got time for that. Come on, I just ain't got time. You cussing, I ain't got time for that. Come on now. You swearing, I ain't got time for that. No, no, I ain't got time. You better be where I'm at or higher than where I'm at. I ain't reaching down low. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm too far in this. Look at your neighbor. I'm too far in this. Come on. You can't be training nobody to be saved. Come on. Come on. When I go to church, you're going to do more than that. And some of you ready to get married and all that? Let that individual go through something and let you see how they handle it. You come in here with a black eye. You better dial 911. <laughs> My fighting days is over until I get in the fight. <laughs> Love your spouse. Pick up their pieces. Work it out. Get some crazy glue. Piece it back together. Come on now. Huh? And as I said earlier, these medications and stuff, they mess with the bedroom sometimes. But help each other. 
Well, baby, just slide down the pool. Okay, go ahead. Why are you turning around looking at somebody over there? Whatever turn you on, that bed is undefiled. I know y'all don't want to hear this. Let me tell you, these young people will take you to school. Got young people who want to go to bed, got married folks don't want to go to bed. It is always twisted. <laughs> you can cut the tape. <laughs> but I'm not ashamed of talking about sex. I'm not ashamed about talking about the difficulties of marriage. I'm not ashamed of it. I kind of pulled back on the rain because some of y'all kind of, he said that. 